I'm not ashamed. How hard is it for a rich person to, to enter the kingdom of God? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of Luke on Walking Through the Bible. His word, the glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Luke chapter 18. We're going to be reading from verses 24 to 34. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So Luke chapter 18, beginning at verse 24. And when Jesus saw that he became very sorrowful, he said, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And those who heard it said, Who then can be saved? But he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Then Peter said, See, we have left all and followed you. So he said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or parents or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of God, who shall not receive many times more in this present time and in the age to come eternal life. Then he took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man will be accomplished. For he will be delivered to the Gentiles and will be mocked and insulted and spit upon. They will scourge him and kill him, and the third day he will rise again. But they understood none of these sayings. This saying was hidden from them, and they did not know the things which were spoken. What we have here today occurs right after Jesus' encounter with the rich young ruler, where this man went away sad because Jesus told him to sell all that he had and give it to the poor, and then come and follow him. It is clear from Jesus' reaction here that the reason Jesus told this man to sell all that he had was because the man trusted in his riches over trusting in God. What Jesus specifically said, that it was hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. How hard? It would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter heaven. Now, some interpret this phrase, the eye of a needle, to mean a gate in Jerusalem that is difficult to enter, where the camel has to unload all its baggage and then crawl through in order to get into Jerusalem when the main gates were closed. I assume people looked at this explanation as comfort to Jesus saying that it is not impossible to be rich and enter the kingdom, just very difficult. The problem with this explanation is that there is no proof that such a gate, get, such a gate ever existed, so we shouldn't interpret the passage this way. What Jesus is using here is a figure of speech, and it represents a very large animal trying to go through a very small hole, the eye of a needle, and not only expresses something very difficult, it expresses something that is practically impossible. Why is this true? Because it is hard for a rich person to put away their pride, avoid the temptations that come with money, and simply remember God in all that they say and do. This should be a warning to us, for chances are, if you're listening to this podcast, you're quite wealthy. Now, you may not be the richest person in the world, but you have some technological device that allows you to watch this video. The apostles understood Jesus loud and clear and said, well, who can be saved? Jesus turned to them and said, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. If left to our own devices, men cannot save themselves. But with God and his word, God can transform us into the people he wants us to be. God could send a camel through the eye of a needle if he wanted to. So he can also save a rich man by grace through obedient faith. Peter then piped up and said, well, we have left all and followed you. Jesus said that everyone who has left all to follow Christ would in this life receive many more times and in the ages to come, many more times. Luke really doesn't delve too deeply into what Jesus meant when he said that the people would gain many times more in this time, but Mark said that they would receive houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and lands with persecution, meaning that they would be able to use what they had in their own lives, but also gain a spiritual family, Christians to support them. These would come with persecutions. After the judgment, though, those who follow Christ would gain eternal life. Coming down to verse 31, we find that Jesus predicts his death again for the third time, with the last time being in Luke chapter 9. Jesus does this by taking his disciples aside, away from the crowd. In fact, Jesus' death was probably within two to two and a half weeks from occurring. Once they finally got to Jerusalem, it would be half a week before Jesus dies. That Jesus was getting so close to his death is ample reason why he again reminds his disciples about what is about to happen. He told them that all that would happen to him would happen in order to fulfill all that is said about the Son of Man, Jesus, in the prophets. 
We have not seen such a declaration in the Gospel of Luke too often before, but it's important to remember that Jesus' death was foretold in the Old Testament. But the Jews weren't going to be the only ones involved. The Gentiles would be as well. He would be mocked, insulted, spit upon, scourged, and then killed. Up until this point, it appeared that only the Jews would be involved in his death because, after all, only, el only the elders, chief priests, and scribes have been mentioned. Here, though, Jesus tells us no, the Gentiles would be involved as well. This makes sense because at that time, Palestine was occupied by the Romans, and therefore, they would need to be involved if the death penalty was to be approved of. As we read through Luke, we're going to find that Jesus got everything right down to the last detail. With that, our time is up for today. Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Luke chapter 18 as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.